Josh Smith here again for the All Guitar Network with some more tips and tricks. So we've been talking all about this rhythm guitar stuff in the blues, but what happens when you move out of the blues? I'm really in love with soul guitar and R&B guitar. Now, obviously, all this music comes from the blues. You know, it's the blues is the, the kind of foundation for all this music. So these guys grew up in church and in blues clubs playing this music, and then they started taking it out into the secular world playing pop and R&B and soul. And as this music evolved, so did the guitar playing that happened on this music. So you start off with very blues-based, rudimentary rhythm guitar, which was, you know, like with Sam Cooke, you would have guys playing... <laughs> You know, and even Bobby Womack played with Sam Cooke some of this stuff. And then down the road, Bobby Womack became one of the most inventive rhythm guitar players in the soul world. But anyways, you kind of had this natural progression of guys learning kind of new things on guitar and this, this feel. And, and as the music evolved, so did the rhythm guitar. An interesting thing about these rhythm guitar players, they started to get very regional in this soul music. So in Memphis, you had two really important guys. You had Teeny Hodges, who played on all the high rhythm stuff, the Al... Al Green stuff. But then the real important one, of course, was Steve Cropper. Now, Steve was coming from this kind of background where he was a blues guy, but he grew up on like doo-wop music and the Five Royales and all this stuff. And Steve invented this style of lead and rhythm at the same time that was very much using double stops and just chanks and very, very simple guitar playing, but really, really, really made, really practically invented a style of guitar. And the best example I can give you for something like that, besides Soul Man or whatever, is a Sam and Dave type stuff. Now, on a tune like Soothe Me, Steve would play... Um... You can hear that's really simple, but it's also brilliant the way that he's mixing the single note lines, the slurs, the little half step motions, the double stops, and that really, really was, you know, a huge part of the stacks and the Memphis Soul sound. Now, so you had Steve doing all this really cool stuff, right? And then in New York, you had this cat, Cornell Dupree, who was kind of on the other end of the spectrum. He was real knowledgeable, but also really greasy in his playing. And he would play a lot of double stops too, but he would play really brilliant stuff like on Rainy Night in Georgia uh, by Brooke Benton, he would play this stuff. So here's the verse, you can hear he plays licks and chords. So really, really beautiful, inventive stuff. And I've kind of followed these guys, and I, I like to see these natural progressions between players and the music as it kind of evolves. So for me, in my personal you know, world, I found a, a link between that and then Larry Carlton, who's one of my heroes, came, comes to L.A. and starts playing that stuff because he loves it and takes it even to the next level as far as technique and ability goes. And if you listen to a Joni Mitchell tune called Help Me, it's almost the same thing as Rainy Night in Georgia, and all of a sudden he starts playing this really, like... But it's, he got that directly from Cornell Dupree and just kind of took it up to the next level. Now then, you had guys in Chicago playing blues music and starting to incorporate some of this stuff into their blues music, and then you had Curtis Mayfield. That should be its own video. The other big main soul guitar was, was Motown, of course. Now, Motown was its own thing, and it was always a two or three guitar part thing, and it was guys playing really, really simple parts, but it was about the collection of the, you know, the sum of the, the parts. So you always had a guy playing chanks that were maybe like... And then you always had a guy going... And 
And then you had a guy definitely doing high chang something like. Sorry, I'm not in tune, but basically you get the idea. So soul guitar kind of is its really own style. It's, it's this thing that you can dive into and find all this nuance. And, and it just kept evolving over the years into these brilliant things. And, you know, Hendrix started taking stuff from these guys and bringing it into rock and roll and into, you know, his music. And, and it, it just influenced a giant generation of guitar players. And uh, I'm really obsessed with that stuff. So dive into Cornell Dupree and to Steve Cropper, definitely. And check that stuff out. All right. Josh Smith here at the All Guitar Network. And uh, look for the next video where I'll go further on. Thank you.